Okay, we haven't looked at one like this yet. This one has four terms in it. So if you have one that has uh, four terms, then the way the procedure that you want to use is uh, factoring by grouping. So it may not work all the time, but for ones like this in this section, most likely if they give you four terms, you're probably going to have to use a uh, grouping method in order to uh, factor that one. The grouping method works to where you're going to factor the first two and the second two separately. So we're going to imagine that we only have just the first two and we're going to factor that. Now if, if we want to factor just the first two, that means we're going to take out a common factor and that's going to be tangent squared. So I'm going to factor out tangent squared from each one of those. So let's start. I'll do that over here. So we're taking out a tangent squared x. And then inside here you get tangent x minus 1 uh, left over. And that would be correctly factored just for the first two terms. Now if I get rid of these and just look at the second two, I have a 3 that's common. Now because the middle term is negative, I'm actually going to pull out a negative in this case. So I'm going to factor out a negative and I get positive tangent x, trying to match this one if I can. And then plus 3 divided by negative 3, you do get negative 1. So now we notice that we have the same term repeating and that's always going to happen. If you can factor it with grouping, then you should actually see both of these be the same. So now that means we have a uh, common factor of tangent x minus 1 that we can pull out uh, from this whole thing. So I'm going to put the tangent x minus 1 on the outside. If I get rid of those, then I have tangent squared x minus 3 left over. That's going to be the second part, tangent squared x minus 3. So now this part I have correctly factored using the grouping method. So now we have it down to these two. Now each of those individually you want to set equal to 0. So you're going to do tangent x minus 1 equals 0 and tangent squared x minus 3 equals 0. If you solve this one you get tan x equals 1. This one you get tangent squared x equals 3. If we, did, if we subtract 3 or add 3 to both sides then we square root both sides and you get tangent x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So now we have these are the two equations now that I want to solve, but I'm going to do that by using my table and also I'm going to use reference angles with the unit circle to find the other angles. Now first, tangent x equals 1. If I go down the tangent column to where I see 1, that means instantly I can get pi over 4 is one of my answers because it's got to be in terms of radians. So I know for sure that one of my answers here is got to be pi over 4 and that's going to be drawn right here. That angle is pi over 4. Now I got to find the other quadrant where tangent is positive in and that's where I'm going to draw the reference angle. So if I do all students take tangent represents positive here so I got to draw the other angle down in the third quadrant because that's the other one where tangent is going to be positive in. So I'm going to draw this right here and that one right there is also going to be uh, pi over 4. So I want to indicate that. Now to get to this angle here, we've got to go all the way around here, that's pi, and we're going to add an additional pi over 4 to that, so that's going to be 5 pi over 4. So that would be the, the other solution for the first equation. So now I know I have pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 are the two places there. So now that I have that complete, what's going to happen is now I have to look at tangent x equals positive and negative square root of 3. So let's look at square root of 3 first. We go down the tangent column here. Here's square root of 3. That refers to a reference angle of uh, pi over 3. So I'm going to go ahead now and just change that to pi over 3. And now this time uh, we, that's going to be one of our first answers. Now if I want to find another place where tangent is equal to positive square root of 3, we already said again down here in this quadrant that's going to be where another place where it's going to be positive. So I have another pi over 3 uh, right here in, in that section. So same as I did before, I know that my answer here, pi over 3, is one of my first answers. But then, to find the one over here, I have pi and I'm adding pi over 3 to it. So I have, when I add that, I get 4 pi over 3. So that's going to be the second solution that I have for this. Now that, I just took care of both positive and negative square root of 3. So I'm done with those. But now I want to work with the reference angle. However, I'm working with the reference angle that is that gives me something where tangent is negative. So if these two quadrants are where tangent's positive, that means the second and fourth quadrant, these are the ones where uh, tangent's negative. 
So I'm going to draw the reference angle. The reference angle again that we're using is pi over 3. So I'm going to draw pi over 3 right here. So remember that's always measured to the closest x-axis. So that's where pi over 3 will be drawn there. And I got to draw another one over here in this quadrant. So when I draw that, that's going to be here. This is also going to be my pi over 3 reference angle. Why am I choosing these two quadrants? Because I want to also look at where tangent is equal to negative square root of 3. And if tangent's negative, that's only going to happen in the second and the fourth quadrant. That's why I'm setting it up this way. Okay, so this, this time I have, I have, I would have pi, that that's, uh, would be this angle, this line right here, and I'm going to go back pi over 3. So I want to take pi minus pi over 3. You're going to get 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 would be the other solution here. Then we're going to get the last one down here in the fourth quadrant. This is 2 pi, this line right there, and you're, gonna, you're going back this direction in amount of pi over 3. So you're taking 2 pi minus pi over 3, that's going to give you 5 pi over 3. So this total problem, when I write my whole answer out, I have to actually write all six of these when I enter in my answer. So if you're putting these in like online, if you're using online uh, homework program, you're going to put them all uh, listed here. Now, it shouldn't matter what order that you write these in because the, uh, the computer software should actually take these in any order. But technically, if you want to write your whole answer, this is going to have six total solutions here. So we got the first two was the answers for the first equation, and we actually got four answers for the other one over here because we had the plus and minus. We had to consider the positive quadrants and also the negative quadrants. So that's why we got a total of six answers here.